Hey folks, Brad Perkins here, birding enthusiast and uh, amateur outdoor wildlife nature photographer. Um, here to uh, do another birding with Brad session. This one's going to be on the raptors in Ohio. Uh, we've done a couple previous ones on warblers in Ohio and marsh birds in Ohio. Uh, today is raptors in Ohio. So uh, what is a raptor? So um, raptors are distinguished by three basic characteristics. Uh, one of those is that they use their talons to catch uh, their food. Uh, that food is normally vertebrate animals. That could be anything from snakes, frogs, fish, to, uh, to some of our mammals, uh, small ones such as uh, voles and mice, up to uh, you know, rabbits and squirrels and groundhogs and things like that. So when we, you know, when we think about, oh, the third thing, sorry, third thing is that they usually also have a hooked beak uh, in order to tear that food apart. So, uh, you know, we normally think of raptors here in Ohio, and we have a lot of them. We, we often think of the, the hawks and the owls, and uh, those are definitely raptors, and we're going to talk about those today. But I'm going to start off with uh, one of those that we, we see a lot, but we don't often think about them as, as being a raptor. And that's our turkey vulture. So we actually have a couple of vulture species here in Ohio. Uh, the turkey vulture is uh, easily uh, characterized here by the, the dark brown body and the red featherless head. And so I've got another picture here. Some people wonder why the vulture's heads are featherless, but I guess if you were going to stick your head into a rotting animal to eat food, you might not want to stick into a bunch of feathers anyway. So uh, that's, that's why they don't have feathers on their heads. It works out pretty well for them. Uh, this is a picture here of a turkey vulture. Uh, got his wings spread out there trying to collect a little sun and warm up before he takes off looking for food. So the other uh, vulture that we have here in Ohio is the black vulture. Uh, and this vulture has, be, has, has become more prominent here in the last 10 to 15 years. Um, it was normally a southern bird, has been working its way north um, and further north into Ohio over the last 10 or 15 years. And the black vulture is uh, you know, distinguished from the turkey vulture by two or three things. First off here, as you can see, it doesn't have the, the red head. It has more of a brownish gray featherless head. Um, it's also just slightly smaller than the turkey vulture, uh, but it's, it's even better distinguished in flight by a couple characteristics. The turkey vulture in flight, um, it either flaps its wings slowly or when it's soaring, its wingtips are always tipped up in a V-shape. The black vulture, on the other hand, um, when, it's, when it's flapping its wings, it's a combination of three or four short, fast wing beats with a, followed by a glide, similar to a red-tailed hawk. Um, or when it's, when it's soaring, its wings are, are relatively flat horizontally, but uh, they're often tipped forward. So the wing, wing tips are tipped forward. And from the underneath side, a couple of identifying characteristics. The turkey vulture has a, a long, uh, usually wedged shaped tail, whereas the, the black vulture has a, a shorter, stubbier fan shaped tail. Uh, but often the adults, you can also see that they have white out near their wing tips from underneath. So uh, again, the black vulture um, is also more aggressive than the turkey vulture. The turkey vulture mostly eats carrion or dead animals. Um, so you see them along the roads all the time. Uh, I, I wish that they were smart enough to use their talons, grab those, uh, those dead squirrels and, and skunks and stuff and get them off the road and eat them off there. Uh, but they don't seem to be. So a lot of them get killed that way because they're eating in the middle of the road. But uh, the black vulture, on the other hand, although it does eat carrion, is also a little more aggressive and are known to, uh, to actually kill some live animals. And most of that is, is newborn livestock. So uh, they're very detrimental to uh, sheep herds and, and calves and things like that, where they, uh, they like to attack them right, I mean, right as they're being born. So uh, farmers in the area don't like the, the black vulture at all. So moving from our vultures, uh, we're going to go into our falcons. So we've got three falcons here in Ohio. The, we'll start with the smallest here, which is the American kestrel. Now, as I've stated before in my presentations, um, you know, we're using pictures that I've taken as an amateur photographer over, over the years here. Uh, but this is actually a picture that my wife took as one of our favorites. And um, this is about as cute as pose as you're going to see on a bird. So this is the American kestrel. Uh, sometimes referred to as a sparrow hawk. It's very, very small uh, falcon. In fact, it's our, it is our smallest falcon. It's only about the size of a dove. 
But one of the identifying characteristics of all of our falcons are the, the black uh, sideburns that you can see very prominently here on this, on this American kestrel. Uh, the American kestrel also has a lot of coloration to it. So it's got some blue grays, some light tans, some whites, some dark browns. So it's a very beautiful bird. Most of the time when you see this bird though, it's like this. It's when he's sitting on a power line or telephone line, either looking for his prey down below, or in this case uh, where he's got his mouse and he's gonna sit there and then have some lunch. Again, you can see the, the pretty colors on, on the American kestrel here and the, the prominent uh, sideburns there. So that's the American kestrel. Uh, we'll move up in size then to the Merlin. And the Merlin is not a real common falcon here in Ohio. The ones that I have seen have always been in the, uh, the winter time or late winter, early spring. They will sometimes migrate down from uh, a little bit further north, spend some time here in the winter time. And there, there's not a lot of distinguishing characteristics with the, with the Merlin. The body is basically the backside, the wings and the back are basically just a dark brown to, to a gray brown or charcoal brown. It does have the black sideburns up around the head area, but a little harder to see on this one. Um, its tail, and I can show you um, little, another picture here in just a moment, but its tail has some banding on it. When it's fanned out, you can see that really well. And the chest area is white with a combination of brown bars and brown dots on it. And here's a picture of the Merlin with the uh, tail fanned out. And you can see the very distinctive striping pattern on the Merlin. So the Merlin's just a little bigger than the American Kestrel. So we're talking, you know, bigger than a dove size, but not a whole lot. So the other falcon that we have here in Ohio is the Peregrine Falcon. Peregrine Falcon's our largest falcon. So this is, you know, crow sized bird, very sleek, uh, very aerodynamic. Um, this is known to be the fastest uh, flying bird uh, possibly in the, in the world. Uh, they can reach up a speed of up to 200 miles an hour when they're in a dive. Oftentimes they use their talons when they're in a dive to, to actually knock out young, young birds in flight. And then uh, as they're tumbling through the sky, they'll, they'll fly down and grab them before they hit the ground. So the, the peregrine falcon has uh, also uh, been, been making a comeback here in the States as they've been released and people have built nest boxes for them up on a lot of skyscrapers in your big cities. I think it reminds them of their uh, cliffside homes that, that maybe they would, or cliffside nests they would build out in the Western mountain states. And this gives the, it gives them the opportunity to, you know, eat pigeons and sparrows and other things that we find in the city that probably have too much of and folks are glad to see the peregrine falcons there uh, taking advantage of, of some of that food source. So the peregrine falcon is a, you know, mostly steel gray coloration on its back and wings. Shot here shows the front is white with, with real fine black barring. This guy had been preening for a while, so he was all fluffed up, but a good shot of the front of the peregrine falcon. So these weren't a very common bird in Ohio over the last few, you know, or last several years, but they are on the rise. I've seen several of them now. And uh, hopefully, you know, folks will get a chance to, to see more of these as we go, go forward here in time. So moving from our falcons, we'll, we'll start taking a look at our owls. And we have several owls here in Ohio that we see. The, we'll start with the smallest here and work our way up. And the smallest here is called the soft wet owl. Now the soft wet owl isn't usually found in Ohio year round. Again, it's one of those northern birds that will sometimes come down and overwinter here in Ohio. The soft wet owl is very small. We're talking like uh, about the size of a, a big man's fist when it's closed up. That's all the bigger this bird is. Uh, this particular picture is actually that's his back we're looking at. He's got his head spun around where he can look at us, but uh, you can see the, the back of it there is just a real smooth brown color. Here's another shot uh, showing the front of the soft wet owl. It's, it's white with these you know beautiful reddish brown streaks in it. There's another picture. And most of the ones that I have seen, in fact, I think all the ones that I've seen have been in the northern half of the state. Uh, most of them up around the, uh, you know, Western Lake Erie shoreline where they've 
you know, come across Lake Erie, coming down out of Canada and found some nice uh, places there to, to feed and hang out in some of the pines and other brush there. So beautiful little owl, uh, the saw wet owl, it's our, it's our smallest owl that we have here in Ohio. Next up from that then is the Eastern Screech Owl. Now the Eastern Screech Owl is uh, another small owl, so a little bigger than the, than the saw wet owl, but not a whole lot. So we're only talking probably a six inch tall bird here a lot longer wingspan than that, but not, not very tall. And the interesting thing about the, the screech owls, there's two color morphs or two color phases. One is the red and one is the gray. Now this is obviously the red here, looks a lot like a red fox in coloration. But then we also have the gray morph. So it's the exact same species of bird, just has two different, different color phases. You have what we call a red, a red morph and a gray morph. I don't, a lot of people, uh, especially in some of your metro parks and stuff, will build uh, screech owl boxes and put them up in the in the woods, as this is a woodland woodland hunting owl, and these these get little guys will often nest in these nest boxes and can come around in the late afternoon, early evening, and you'll find them sitting in these boxes with their heads sticking out, eyes closed, getting a little rest, but got their heads sticking outside the boxes. Pretty pretty cool. Next owl we're going to look at is our most common owl in Ohio, and that's the barred owl. It's called B-A-R-R-E-D, and it gets its name from the, the, the heavily brown barred streaking on its chest. This picture shows the, the brown streaking real well. The other thing it shows is its eye color. The barred owl has deep black eyes in comparison to many of our owls, and we'll see a couple of them later here that have, you know, bright yellow eyes, but the barred owl, it's a uh, very, very dark black eyes. And you can see the, the very distinctive, almost heart-shaped facial disc. And the facial disc on most owls, it helps concentrate their eyesight and their ears. Uh, a couple of the owls we hit, see have what we call ear tufts. They'll have feathers that make it look like it's got ears sticking up like a rabbit or something, but those aren't actual ears. Those are just feathers that stick up that make it look like ears. Their ears are actually in closer to the facial disc. And so that helps concentrate the sound and their eyesight for hunting at night. So here's another shot of the barred owl. One of, one of our most beautiful owls and definitely uh, our most common owl that we see here in Ohio. And this is a bigger owl. This is you know, more like uh, crow in height, but, but fatter and you know, distinguished that way from, by its size. Well, the interesting thing about all of our owls is their feathers, the, the outside edges of their feathers are real, um, fine, real serrated, so that when they fly through the air, it actually, it, it's almost soundless because those little fine outer edge feathers and serrations actually break up the sound of, of a normal wing beat uh, flying against the air. So I've actually been in um, situations where we've had somebody bring in owls and hawks and they'd maybe have a, a, a wing from a hawk and a wing from an owl. And you could sit there and shake that owl wing and you don't hear anything and you shake the hawk wing and you definitely hear the uh, but that's why owls if you see one flying through the woods you won't hear it unless it accidentally brush it brushes against a branch or something but you might see it but you won't hear it because they're very silent flyers another owl that we see that's about the same size maybe just a hair smaller is the short-eared owl now you see here the the eyeballs are definitely much different from the barred owl. So bright yellow with the dark black pupils, very distinguished facial disc again, you know, dark facial disc with a white outline. So the short-eared owl, again, comes down in the winter time from, from further north and likes to uh, stay here and hunt over our, our, our hay fields, some of our, uh, you know, old strip mine ground that's been turned back into grasslands. That's their favorite hunting spots where they're looking for for small mice and voles, that type of thing. Here's a, another good shot. This was taken in the evening with the kind of the evening sun hitting it, which gives it a lot more of a yellowish color, but a very, very beautiful owl. On this one, you can see the barred tail, a uh, real striped tail on this bird. And when they're flying, got a couple shots of them flying here. This one, you know, you can see the, that yellow eye really, really good and that facial disc. Wings are flat out. In this picture, if you get a chance to see the underneath side of the wings, are very white. And again, these birds just float low over the grasslands, just kind of just hovering and floating, darting in and out over the grasslands looking for, looking for their dinner. 
opposite the short you know stuff to see them uh, of the of the four or five that I have been fortunate enough to see maybe a half dozen uh, I haven't gotten a clear wide open look at any the other thing is that they the the feathering especially on the, the chest area just looks like burnt bark it looks like a burnt log you just pulled out of a fire here's another shot of one again that front looks like like burnt charred wood and you can see the, the long ear tufts on this one I, and the next picture will show that even better the other thing you see here is that yellow eye with the dark dark pupil and the facial disc has kind of a you know reddish brown around the outside and we're going to see that same look in the great horned owl but you'll notice here that this this owl's face is quite narrow when we look at the great horned owl you'll see that it's got a much wider face here's another look at the face of the long-eared owl and you see those ear tufts and again those aren't real ears it's just a feather that sticks up and makes it look like an ear but again you can see kind of a narrow uh, look to the to the face on this but again the long-eared owl is rare um, I still haven't, I've only seen, seen a few in the state and uh, I've not gotten a really close up, straight on look at one yet. Hope to do that someday. So then we're going to move up to our great horned owl, which is the largest of our owls here in Ohio, often known as the tiger in the sky or tiger in the woods. This is a very ferocious hunter. I've seen pictures of the great horned owls actually uh, taking small eaglets off of an eagle's nest at night, just swoop in, grab them and go. And here's another shot here uh, with the great horned owl. And again, as an amateur photographer, I get frustrated when I have sticks in the way and I just can't get enough good pictures to, to get one clear one. But one of these days I'll get, a, get another good one here for great horned owl. Again, it has fairly, fairly large ear tufts, but you'll notice here that um, different from the, the long-eared owl that we saw, the, the body pattern markings are much different and the face, even though it's got that same kind of reddish brown facial disc it's it's much wider and it doesn't have as much dark in by the close part of the face here's a shot of a couple great horned owl chicks so these are these are little guys uh just recently hatched they start off as a little white fuzzball eventually they'll grow up to to be the size of their their, their mom and dad there which are the, the great horned owl is quite large owl uh bigger than a crow probably not as big as a vulture but uh quite sizable you know, say in the red-tailed hawk type size category. A couple more owls here to show, um, so the snowy owl. So this, this is one of my favorites. This is one growing up as a kid, I wondered if I'd ever see a snowy owl in real life. Uh, fortunately, I have uh, seen snowy owls here in Ohio several times. Uh, about five years ago, we had a large, what they call an eruption of uh, snowy owls migrating south for the winter. And that usually happens after a year where up in the Arctic, which is their home range, they've had a, maybe a really, really good food source of, of lemmings and voles, which are their favorite food. And if they've had a real high population of those, then most of the chicks survived that year. Uh, which what that leads to then is the following year, if those lemmings and vole populations are down, then a lot of those young, young owls get booted out of the territory and uh, forced to go look for food elsewhere. So when that happens, they'll, they'll migrate south looking for a food source. And so often they'll, they'll end up coming south, coming across Lake Erie and, and you know, being spotted here in Ohio. And again, they kind of like open areas. So you'll see them around airports a lot, um, around other field areas. And they're, they're a quite beautiful bird. Here's a, here's a shot of one I got up in, in uh, Wayne County a few winters back. And so the, the adult males are almost solid white. But the, the females and the young males have a lot of black and brown barring on their chest, on their wings, and even on the top of their head. So I don't know if this is a young, young male or female, but uh, be beautiful bird here. And again, it's pretty, pretty sizable bird, you know, crow size in height, but, but fatter. Now this shot here shows a snowy owl with his wings spread out a little bit. Again, you can see that heavy barring under his chest and on top of his wings, but you can also see all the feathers covering his legs. So thinking about the bird being an Arctic bird, uh, this, this shows, you know, he's got some, some great feather covering there to, to protect his, his legs from the cold. The other thing is when, it, when the snowy owls do come this far south, you can see them in the daytime, unlike a lot of our owls, which only hunt at night, you often don't don't see those, they're very hard to find and very hard to see. But the snowy owl, 
used to being in the Arctic where, you know, during the summer, it's 24 hour daylight. So they have to hunt in the daylight. Uh, they're not opposed to doing that when they're, when they're down here. So this, this one you can see in the, in the daytime, very beautiful bird. The last owl we're gonna look at, apologize for the quality of the picture. This is a very poor picture, but this is a barn owl, B-A-R-N, so barn owl. One of our most rare owls here in Ohio. And obviously this one's in an old barn, so it's very fitting, but uh, there was no light in this barn. I didn't wanna use a flash, so this was as good a picture as I could get of it. One of these days I'll, I'll get a better picture and it'll show that white facial disc, which on a, uh, on a full adult is, is very bright white really a odd looking odd looking owl when you get to see a, a, a an adult with the, the white face and that beak sticking out of the middle of it and a kind of heart shaped uh, facial disc so a lot of these are, are starting to come back as people are, are actually building nest boxes in in old barns and silos and even out in the open at some of the places like the wilds over in uh, Muskingum County where they've uh, they're doing some research on on barn owls and one of the interesting things where, where most birds only nest at a certain time of year and only, only raise young a certain time of year, the barn owl will, will mate and have young any time that there's a, a, a significant food source. So whether that's in the middle of the winter, the middle of the summer, uh, as long as there's enough of a food source to, uh, to, to keep them supplied, uh, they will mate and, have, uh, and raise young at any time of year. So this is the barn owl. So that's gonna close out our owls we're going to move on to the hawks. We've got a lot of different hawks here in Ohio. And our smallest hawk, um, which I do not have a good picture of, is the sharp-shinned hawk. Now, the sharp-shinned hawk and the cooper's hawk look very similar, except for their size. So I have a picture here of a cooper's hawk. The sharp-shinned is very, very similar to this, um, other than it's, it's a lot smaller. So the sharp-shinned hawk may be, again, a, just a, a dove size, a little bigger, whereas the cooper's hawk Lengthwise is getting close to the size of a crow, but not quite as, as thick. Uh, both of these birds are, are woodland hunters, so they have short rounded wings and a long tail for you know to help them navigate, gives them some real um, you know, aerobatic abilities with the with the long tail for a rudder and the short powerful wings. The front of the Cooper's hawk you can see here has a beautiful teardrop, brown teardrop pattern on on a white chest. You can see that again here on this one. Uh, you can see the white white teardrops on the, or the, the dark brown teardrops, excuse me, on the, on the white chest. And again, the long striped tail. Looking at the back of the Cooper's Hawk, in a, in a full adult, it's more of a slate gray. Uh, I believe this is a, a little bit younger one, so it's more, more brown colored, but it's usually a dark, uh, you know, slate, almost blue gray on the back. So this is a Cooper's Hawk, uh, one of our, our nice woodland hunters. Uh, watch out around your bird feeders at home. This is the guy that uh, loves to come in and disrupt uh, what's going on there as he tries to get his lunch. Next, we'll move up to a red-shouldered hawk. So the red-shouldered hawk is a little bigger than the Cooper's Hawk, not quite as big as a red-tailed hawk. Has the, the reddish auburn color up around its shoulders on the back of its head. And you can see here the, the, the back wing feathers and the tail feathers have a very nice white striping pattern on black. But also when you start to get to where you can see the, the chest in the front of the red shouldered hawk, it has a lot of, of fine uh, reddish brown barring on the, on the chest and the, the front belly of the, of the hawk. And when you get one in a, a, a late afternoon sun hitting it, it can light up and look, you know, almost solid reddish brown on the chest. And, and the shoulders, which is where it gets its name from. So this is our red-shouldered hawk. And again, some areas of the state, it's a, it's a lot more common than others. So another hawk that's similar in size is the broad-winged hawk. And I've only got a couple of, uh, you know, halfway decent pictures here of a broad-winged hawk. I don't, I don't see them very often. It's another woodland hawk. And it's got a little bit of that same head color like we saw on the red-shouldered hawk. But a couple of differences, it doesn't have the bright red chest area that the, that the red-shouldered hawk had. And the other thing is the tail. So taking a look at this picture, you see the tail only has two wide white bands on it. And when we saw the red-shouldered hawk, it had very fine banding across the tail and even the, the, the feathers on the back of the, of the body. 
So that's one of the real distinguishing characteristics. If you see one in flight and you see just a couple of big wide white bands across the tail, uh, chances are good it's a, it's a broad-winged hawk. So another group of hawks we have is the harriers. The, nor the northern harrier uh, likes to hunt over our grasslands. In fact, they overlap habitat for hunting with the short-eared owl. So you might see the, the hawks hunting that, that grassland kind of property in the afternoon and, or morning and the, the short-eared owls hunting it then in the late afternoon and evening. So the, the, the male shown here and the female are far different in coloration. The male is either going to be gray to almost black, kind of a charcoal, sometimes known as a, the gray ghost, whereas the female is you know, two or three colors of brown and, and reddish brown. And you can see her, she has a white facial disc that stands out real prominently here. But they're even easier to identify when they're flying. The Northern Harrier, this is a female here, but it wouldn't matter, male and female, have a white rump patch right at the base of the tail where the tail joins the rump. So in flight, this stands out very prominently. And again, these birds fly very low over the grass, over the, the light brush, very similar to the short-eared owl. So our largest hawk that we have here in Ohio is the red-tailed hawk. And the red-tailed hawk, obviously as an adult here, has a, a very bright uh, reddish-brown tail, uh, makes it stand out you know, quite distinguishable there. Uh, the front of the red-tailed hawk is, is usually white, sometimes with a black band across the, the chest. Here's another shot of a red-tailed hawk. Can't see the tail on this one. Um, he's actually sitting on a squirrel. He caught this right in front of us. We were at Sheldon Marsh a couple years ago up, in, up near Lake Erie. But one of the other things you see here, and I'll use my cursor, but on the back of the, the shoulder and wings here are these white lines that form a V between the two shoulder blades down to the, the bottom here. So these form a white V. So if you're looking at a red-tailed hawk sitting on a power line, sitting in a tree, and you see it from the backside, if it's got that white V on it, that's, uh, that's a very you know, easily identifiable characteristic of the red-tailed hawk. And here's a young red-tailed hawk, an immature. And as I mentioned earlier, um, you know, we have some of our, like our vultures that eat carrion, which is dead animals. Most of our raptors will eat some carrion also. And the red-tailed hawk is no stranger to sitting on a deer carcass like this one and uh, helping himself out. So again, you can see the, the white V back here on the back, which is very noticeable, but it doesn't have the bright red tail yet. You know, give this, give this guy another year and he's gonna have the bright red tail just like the rest of the adults. A Couple other hawks to look at here. Um, one that we see sometimes in the winter is the rough-legged hawk. And again, this one comes through and migrates. When it's migrating season, uh, we'll get some that will come here and hang out around our grasslands. And, and a lot of times where I see them are around some of the, the strip mine lands that have been converted into wildlife areas. So whether that's out around the wilds, whether that's at the Tri-Valley Wildlife Area, Woodbury Wildlife Area, some of these other places that um, have lots and lot, you know, lots of acres of, of grassland and brushland, we will see um, rough-legged hawks. Now the rough-legged hawk, kind of like the eastern screech owl, has two color phases, a light morph and a dark morph. So this is the light morph here and a couple identifying characteristics. One here is it's got a very dark belly band. On a red-tailed hawk, it'll have a chest, a dark chest band, but the, the light morph of the rough-legged hawk usually always has a very dark uh, belly band here. And uh, we'll look at a shot of it flying. So when it's flying from underneath, you can see it's got white wings from underneath and it's got these two dark wrist patches. So there's almost a black, we'll call it wrist patches, is right at the bend of the wrist in the, on, a, on a hawk. So that's a very good identifier of a, of a light morph rough-legged hawk when they're flying. I mentioned there's a dark morph too. So the dark morph, if you, if you get to see one of these and they're very hard to photograph, they're very shy. So I, I really struggle to get good photos of these, um, but they're, they're very dark. They're almost black, charcoal black. The whole body, you'll see a little bit of gray up around the beak, but otherwise it's a, it's a very black body. Now the, another easy I'd identifier when they're flying, and then sorry about the quality of this picture, but it's the only one I had of them flying. But I just wanted to show you that they, they really stand out. That white wing with the black outline 
and really the black from the wrist all the way back to the body on these and the tail, uh, a big black band with uh, white on the, on the rump side of it really stands out when you're looking at one of these flying from underneath. So again, this is the rough-legged hawk. This is the dark morph. Okay, moving on to a couple, of, couple other um, types, types of raptors that we'll see here in Ohio from time to time. One is the swallow-tailed kite. Now, there, this is not a common bird. These are normally in the, in the southern United States but we have had a few of these the last few years that have come up here into Ohio. And uh, there, th this one is, you know, characterized by the, the real deep V swallow type tail. And uh, the, color, the color of it is, is black and white. I mean, it's just all black and white. Uh, here's another shot of one. So one of the cool things that they do is they fly again over the, the hay fields and corn fields and that kind of thing. And they love to just pick off grasshoppers and small things like that, you know, on the fly, and they'll actually eat them while they're flying, where you'll see most of our raptors, when they catch something, they'll take it and sit someplace and eat on it, and uh, the small-tailed kites will often eat on the fly. Now, there's another kite that we've been seeing here in Ohio the last several years, and that's a Mississippi kite, which has actually been some nesting down the Chillicothe area, so I was able to go down there and, and find a couple down there last year. I uh, apologize again for the, the, the pictures, but when you're trying to take a picture of a gray and white bird in a, against a gray and white sky, without that contrast, it's, it's hard to get a good picture. But it's uh, similar to the, to the swallow-tailed kite, uh, just instead of black and white, it's more gray and, gray and off-white, you know, charcoal and light gray. But there's also a difference when they're flying. And again, this is not a very good picture, but look at the difference in the tail pattern. The Mississippi kite has a fan-shaped tail, whereas the swallowtail kite has that very V-shaped swallow type tail. So again, even if you were against a gray sky and you couldn't tell whether this one was black and white and this one was gray and white, that tail will, will give it away here in Ohio. So we'll finish up here uh, with a couple of our larger raptors. First one here we're gonna look at is the osprey. So the osprey is a fish hawk. Uh, they, basically dying almost entirely on fish. Uh, this one, if you take a look right down here, you'll actually see a silver band on its right, right leg here. So this one at one time was, was either, either captured and uh, marked by, by wildlife biologists with a, with a band on it, or more likely it was taken from a nest at a young age, banded, raised in a, an enclosure uh, without a lot of human contact other than, you know, giving it food. But then, then it was what they call hack, which they're often put in a, a tower up on a platform near a lake. And when they get to the point where they can fly and should be big enough to catch their own food, they're released in an area. Uh, the hope being that they will then stay in that area and consider that to be their home territory. And that has worked quite well. The ospreys used to be very rare here in Ohio. Uh, one of the things I've done is monitored bald eagle nests in the state uh, since the mid-1990s. And at that time, ospreys were extremely rare. Uh, and we now have, we ha now have nests all over Ohio with ospreys. They've, they've come, made a great comeback. The, you know, the identifying characteristics of the osprey, obviously the, the black and white head, although some people will see that white head from a distance and think, oh, I'm looking at a bald eagle. But in reality, uh, the, the, the osprey has a much shorter bill and it's always black, whereas the, the bald eagle starts off kind of a brownish and turns to a bright yellow. But also the osprey has a solid white chest and belly area. Uh, some young bald eagles will have a little white modeling on the chest, but you'll never see a bald eagle with a solid white um, chest and belly area. And here's another shot of one coming in. And, and these are, you know, fairly large birds. They're not as big as an eagle, but they do have a long wingspan. And this guy's bringing in some nesting material. And if you, if you get, if you can see his eyes there, you can tell he's looking right directly at me in the camera, even though I'm probably a hundred yards away, he's, he's zeroed in on me. And again, you can see that, uh, that silver band here. This is, this is the same bird that, that I was taking pictures of in the other photo. So that's the osprey. Now I've got a couple pictures here of golden eagles. We have golden eagles in Ohio, but I'll have to tell you that my, my pictures here are not from Ohio. I have seen golden eagles in Ohio at a couple different places, but I have not gotten the opportunity to get a, a really good picture of one yet here in Ohio. But I wanted to show you a picture. So I've got a couple here. 
And the, the main identifying characteristics of the golden eagle, again, they're very large. The, the golden eagle, the bald eagle are about the same size, you know, 32, 36 inches tall, uh, six to seven foot wingspans. The golden eagle though, the, the body is, is almost all solid brown, but whether it's a young one or an old one, they all have that, that golden head, golden feathers around the head, makes it look like a quite large head, but you've got that golden head mantle. As opposed to, here's an immature bald eagle, and the immature bald eagle, um, now this one does have a, a brown head with a little bit of white in it. Uh, you can see that the beak is already starting to, to get yellow, but it takes a bald eagle uh, four to five years to get the solid white head and tail. So in between there, they'll go from, you know, blondish markings to dark brown markings to some white speckling on them. Uh, a lot of different color combinations for, for immature bald eagles but they don't have that gold head mantle like you'll see here on the golden eagle. So oftentimes people will see a, an immature bald eagle and go, oh, hey, I'm seeing these golden eagles down such and such a place, or whatever. And most of the time it turns out they're just seeing immature bald eagles and, and just don't maybe know the identifying characteristics to tell the difference. Now we'll take a look at a couple of the adult bald eagle pictures and uh, this is one of these things I've, I've taken thousands of pictures of bald eagles, so I always struggle with what to what to show in a presentation. Uh, but I got a couple different ones here. Obviously, this is a full grown adult has the solid white head, solid white tail that you can't fully see in this picture and the, the bright yellow beak. Uh, but he's just caught himself some dinner. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, this is a, a probably a koi fish that was released from somebody's koi pond. And this was actually in some of the, one of the bays of, on Lake Erie. And here he is starting to tear it apart with that hooked beak we talked about earlier. But I would imagine that even though they have eyesight that's supposedly six times better than a human's, uh, it doesn't take much to, to spot a, a, a carp that's that bright colored. So the koi fish is kind of an Asian carp. And uh, some of them are, are just bright orange like a goldfish. So I'll finish up here with a, a final adult bald eagle picture here. Uh, this is what, one of my favorite pictures. Just He's just perched there. He's kind of looking over at the nest area. Uh, this is a, near a nest up in Tuscarawas County, Ohio. And uh, it's funny because this, this picture of the background looks painted on. Uh, in fact, it's just uh, a, a plowed up harvested cornfield that uh, fuzzed out when you zoom in on the, on the eagle. And so it just makes it look like a painted background. Last thing I'll talk about, the bald eagle here. You know, at one time, uh, this bird was almost completely extinct from Ohio. Back in the, in the 70s, there were only four nesting pairs of bald eagles in the entire state. And those were up on the western shores of Lake Erie. When I started monitoring bald eagle nests in the mid-1990s, we had less than 30 nesting pairs of bald eagles in the state at that time. This past spring in 2020 here, the Division of Wildlife wanted to get a really accurate count so they asked a lot of vo volunteers like myself and others to record all their sightings of active bald eagle nests in the state this spring. And Division of Wildlife employees went out and, and confirmed those, those sightings. And the final count was just over 700 active bald eagle nests in the state of Ohio. Uh, I can remember Division of Wildlife talking back in the late 90s that we didn't think we'd you know, they'd ever see 100 nests in the state. And we're up to over 700 now. So remarkable success story of the comeback of the bald eagle in Ohio. So if you, if you haven't seen a bald eagle in the wild in Ohio, uh, you will soon because there's, there's lots of them out there. So, well, that's going to finish up our session of Birding with Brad, the Raptors of Ohio today. Um, thank you for joining me. And we're going to, you know, put out a few more of these throughout the summer and fall. If you have any questions, uh, for me or, or, or thoughts about any of the pictures or, or locations or, or, or any questions at all about them, uh, feel free to contact me. My, my, my contact information here, brad at ohioforest.org, or you can call my phone at 740-502-4215. So thanks again. Uh, hope you enjoyed our, our little session day with uh, Raptors of Ohio, and get out there and uh, have some, some happy birding.